Hello and welcome into Iowa Prep Sports Post Game Week 3. Nathan Ford with the Gazette here. Last week we had multiple number one teams fall. This week they were all safe, but there were a couple of close calls and plenty of exciting games elsewhere. I think one of the games that most people were excited about coming into the night was out at Kingston Stadium. 5A number four Cedar Rapids Kennedy taking on 4A number three Cedar Rapids Washington. Both these teams opted 2-0 starts, and of course the Warriors won last year's meeting 28-21 in a bit of a surprise. So let's check out the highlights, see how this one went tonight. Washington would get off to a fast start with Watts McBride taking a big run down the sideline here. Tack on a horse collar penalty at the end, and the Warriors were in business early. Then it's Miles Thompson trying the same side, runs into a defender, so he's just going to go around the other way and gets all the way to the pylon for a 16-yard touchdown. It was Washington taking a 7-0 lead. So Kennedy's got to do something to get a spark going. Fourth down, they go for the fake punt. Luke Bradley converts, picks up a bunch of extra yardage. Same drive, another fourth down. It's fourth and five. Carson Blitz avoids the tackler and hits Michael Muller in for the touchdown. PAT was no good, so it was still 7-6 Washington. Second quarter now, Blitz finds Brendan Lindy and Kennedy takes the lead. Two point conversion was good, it was 14 to seven. Kennedy took the lead for good. It was the defense's turn later in the first half. Dominic Mann with the interception. He's not gonna settle just for the pick though. Taking it back, making a couple of guys miss, picks up some nice blocks. He's got a lot of guys helping him into the end zone there. Kennedy would go up 20 to seven at halftime and go on to win 48 to seven. And KJ Pilcher was out at Kingston Stadium as well. He's got the full report from there. Hi, I'm KJ Pilcher reporting from Kingston Stadium where Cedar Rapids Kennedy defeated Cedar Rapids Washington 48-7, a battle between two ranked and two unbeaten teams coming in. You might've expected uh, a close game on paper, but uh, after giving up the first touchdown, a 16 yard run by Miles Thompson, uh, it was all Kennedy after that uh, for the last three and a half quarters. Uh, Cedar Rapids Kennedy scored seven touchdowns after giving up that opening score. Uh, interestingly, uh, four of them were through the air. Carson Bleats uh, hit uh, Michael Mulherin for actually the first uh, uh, touchdown on a fourth and uh, fourth and five play from the Washington 23. And then uh, he hooked up with uh, Brendan Lindy uh, for three touchdowns after that, a 10 yarder in the second quarter, and then a big 53 yard touchdown pass uh, to, to cap their first possession in the third quarter. Uh, also hit uh, Lindy for another 10 yard uh, score in the third to make it 34-7 uh, Cougars. Uh, interestingly for Lindy, who finished with uh, seven catches for 111 yards, uh, did not has not played varsity football for the Cougars. Uh, this was his first year. Uh, said he had a bad experience in youth football, didn't go out. He's a track standout, Drake qualifier in the high jump, and he actually uh, hadn't had a catch until this game. And they they uh, thought they could utilize him, so they made some plays this week, and uh, it, it turned out really well. Like I said, seven catches for 111 yards. Carson Bleats uh, threw for 162 overall. Uh, Jazan Williams, uh, rushed for over 80 yards in the touchdown as well for Kennedy and the Kennedy defense was pretty stout. Uh, they forced uh, three turnovers, didn't allow a Washington possession to last more than six plays. So that's pretty impressive. Uh, so Kennedy 3-0 going into next week. Washington drops to 2-1. and Back to you, Nathan. Another game in Cedar Rapids that had similar hype tonight and probably deserved even more based on how it played out. 5A number three, Cedar Rapids Prairie hosting 5A number nine, Cedar Falls. Jeff Johnson was there reporting for us. He's got the full story up at thegazette.com and you're going to want to read about this one. But let's recap how it ended. Brandon Flicko of Prairie scores with 51 seconds left to put the Hawks up 21 to 17. Cedar Falls comes back with a trick play, a short pass of two yards to Caden Jansen, who lateraled it, 
And then the ball was thrown across the field to quarterback Hunter Jacobson. He took it 80 yards to the Prairie 15. That set up the game-winning touchdown, Jacobson hitting Jansen from six yards out with seven seconds left, and Cedar Falls went on to win 24-21, to handing Prairie its first loss of the season. Okay, I mentioned that some top-ranked teams had some interesting games tonight. Well, 5A number one Southeast Polk actually trailed at halftime against Joaquin Northwest 7-6, but the Rams came back to win 27-7. The Wolves are now 0-3, but those losses have come to Valley, Dowling, and Southeast Polk. Clearly, they are for real, but just have not been able to get that first win in school history yet. Ankeny was number two last week, but the Hawks lost to Ankeny Centennial. But they bounced back tonight and beat number two, West Des Moines Dowling, 27-13. So those big Central Iowa powers continue to beat up on each other. Another one, number four, Urbandale, number six, West Des Moines Valley, went to overtime. The Tigers were able to win that one 21-14. An upset over here in eastern Iowa, at least on paper for now. Linmar beats number seven, Pleasant Valley, 18-7. The Lions are now 3-0, one of those... Cedar Rapids, Iowa City Metro teams that we've been keeping an eye on after a fast start. They didn't get a lot of preseason hype, but now they're 3-0 with a win over a ranked team. Iowa City High, another one of those teams. They're 3-0 after a 43-5 win at Ames for the Little Cyhawk Trophy. Also, number 8, Johnson, survived a scare against Dallas Center Grimes, 17-16. In Class 4A, top-ranked Indianola in a wild one beat Pella 44-37. Number two, North Scott beat number seven, 3A number seven, that is Davenport Assumption, 38 to 14. Number four, Cedar Rapids Xavier won at Dubuque Waller, 28 to nine. Another top 10 game, Lewis Central ranked fourth all over number nine, Norwalk, 31 to three. Sixth ranked Winterset actually lost to 1A top ranked man meter, 28 to 13. So the Bulldogs, not only are they ranked number one in 1A, but they would be a contender in a lot of the bigger classes as well. 7th-ranked Waverly Shell Rock is 3-0 after a 31-14 win over Webster City. Same for number 8, Bondurant Farrar. They beat Gilbert 48-7. And number 10, Fort Dodge beat Waterlouise 36-6. Western Dubuque started its season with a couple of losses to ranked teams, North Scott and Xavier. But the Bobcats have been really good the last few years, and we expect that to continue. They got on the board with on the, in the win column, that is, with their first win tonight against Iowa City Liberty. Ryan Plagenkuhl has the details. It's a final from North Liberty. Western Dubuque defeats the Lightning 21-10. Both defenses played well tonight. The Lightning forced four turnovers but couldn't capitalize. The Lightning missed two second-half field goals, and the second one was partially blocked. Liberty trailed 14-10 at half, and while they had some nice drives in the second half, they couldn't put anything on the board. Liberty drops to 0-3 while Western Dubuque moves to 1-2. Back to you, Nathan. Huge game over in Western Iowa tonight in Class 3A. Top-ranked Harlan. If you, they weren't an obvious number one before, the Cyclones definitely are now. Beat number three, Sergeant Bluff Luton, 55-26. to Second-ranked Boynton Hole Rock Valley beat Unique Christian, 56-0. to Over here in Eastern Iowa, fourth-ranked Independence over West Liberty, 45-0. Number five, Solon beat Williamsburg, 28-14. to Number six, West Delaware over Decorah, 42-21. to Eighth-ranked Humboldt beats 2A number two, Esterville Lincoln Central, 38-28. to Esterville moved up the rankings last week after beating West Lyon. It was number nine, Nevada, over Roland Story, 64 to seven. And we actually have three teams tied for 10th this week in the Class 3A poll. Algona beat Garner Hayfield Ventura, 47-13. DeWitt Central over Clinton, 44 to 28. And Mount Vernon over Tipton, 49 to zero. All right, a couple more Eastern Iowa teams that weren't ranked in the preseason, but got off to 2-0 starts, some impressive wins, and got into the Gazette poll. Monticello, ranked number eight in 2A, hosting 1A number nine, Dyersville Beckman. Jeff Linder has the report. Good evening, it's Jeff Linder from the Gazette, reporting from Dean Nelson Field in Monticello, where Dyersville Beckman defeated the host Panthers 48-21 in a high school football game. Uh, story of the game was Owen Hintergaard from Beckman, ran 41 times, 272 yards, four touchdowns, leading the Blazers to a 461-yard tally. 402 of those yards came on the ground. The uh, game was tied 13-13 late in the second quarter. Uh, Beckman scored on a long touchdown pass to go up 20-13 at half. They scored on their first four possessions of the second half to go up to 48-13, and it ended up 48-21. to uh, reporting from D. Nelson Field in Monticello, it's Jeff Linder. Back to you, Nathan. 
All right, elsewhere in Class 2A, our preseason number one team, Central Lion George Little Rock, gets its first win, and it was a really good one, 43-13 to over 1A number two West Sioux. Our current number one team, Ida Grove, OABCIG, beat East Sac County 46-7. Fourth ranked Southeast Valley, 34, Hampton, Dumont, Cal, 15. Number five, Spirit Lake, edges Western Christian, 22-21. to Sixth ranked West Marshall was ranked number one last week, after that loss to Nevada, they dropped to number six, beats South Hamilton 38 to zero. Number seven, West Lyon loses again to Sioux Center 20 to 13. Same with number nine, Monroe PCM, losing to 1A number seven, Pella Christian 21 to seven. And 10th ranked Wacon goes to two and one with a 42 to six win over Crestwood. We mentioned Van Meter's big win in Class 1A. Number two, Underwood, also with an impressive 69 to seven win over Council Bluff St. Albert. Number four, Iowa City Regina actually won via forfeit against Mid Prairie with the Golden Hawks not having enough players to compete. Fifth ranked MFL Marmac beats Osage in a good one, 35 to 28. Number six, Dyke New Hartford continues to look for real, 48 17 over Clear Lake. Eighth ranked Sigourney Kyoto beats Centerville, 42 to seven. And in Class A, a blowout for number one, West Hancock over Lake Mills, 54 to zero. Number two, Grundy Center beat Wapsie Valley 35-0. The Spartans lost last week and fell to number two. Third-ranked Woodbury Central beat ICANN Manning to improve to 3-0. That, that was a 41-14 score. A good one between number four, Oakland Riverside, and Mount Air 29-26 Riverside on top. Fifth-ranked Lisbon edges Alburnett 18-6. Number six, Logan Magnolia over Westwood 51-24. Number seven, North Lynn, now 3-0, 43-14 no, over Bellevue. Eighth-ranked Hartley HMS beat South O'Brien, 26-0. Number nine, North Tama, now 3-0, oh, 30-6 over Hudson. And 10th-ranked St. Ansgar beat North Union, 40-26. District play there in Class A, same with eight-player. Top-ranked Anita Cam beat West Harrison, 52-14. Number two, Ottoman beat number nine, Fremont Mills, 63-20. So the Knights have taken a couple of blowout losses to the top two teams in our poll and eight player. Third ranked Montezuma is 4-0 after beating BGM 67-32. Number four, Easton Valley over Midland 61-8. Fifth ranked Remsen St. Mary's beat Siouxland Christian 70-0. Number six, Janesville beat Tripola 34-14. Number seven, Newell Fonda beat River Valley 63-18. Eighth ranked New London beat Winfield Mount Union in Battle of Unbeatens there 71-18. And number 10, Gladbrook Rhinebeck beat Dunkerton 64 to six. All right, let's take a look at some of the Gazette area scores. You can actually follow these all night long at the gazette.com slash scoreboard live updating scoreboard. Pretty cool feature there we have here for fans over in the Gazette area. Some of those scores tonight, Dubuque Hempstead beat Iowa City West 39 to 31. Benton Community 28, Marion 6, Clear Creek Amana 48, Washington 14, Grinnell beat South Tama 48-20 for the Steve Kriegel Memorial Trophy, Center Point Urbana over Union 28-7, Cascade 45, Anamosa 35, Waterloo Columbus shut out Benton Shellsburg 35-0, North Cedar beat Pekin 26-9, Edgewood Colesburg 54, Central City 6, it was Lone Tree over HLV 66-40, West Branch shut out Maquoketa Valley 52-0, North Fayette Valley all over Postville 64-0. Turkey Valley beat Rockford 60-12. Clayton Ridge beat South Winnishik 7-0. Waco 38, English Valley's 13. Wilton beat Highland 39-14. Thanks so much for tuning in to week three of Iowa Prep Sports post game. Midweek, we're going to have another episode of the Prep Football Huddle. Jeff Linder, Jeff Johnson, KJ Pilcher going more in depth on these teams, players, what they're watching in week four as well. Thank you again for joining us, whether on video, audio, and check out thegazette.com for all of the post-game coverage.